Okay, we're back to bacon again. Right now I want to share with you Pampered Chef's new waffle stick pan. It's awesome. You can make waffles in no time whatsoever in the oven in the form of sticks. But this is not just for waffles. I'm going to share with you numerous other ideas you can use with it too. It's got that really cool retro color on the bottom um, and you can make a total of six waffle sticks. So let's get started with our recipe. All right, this waffle stick recipe is on my website and the availability to order the waffle stick pan is on my website also. And that happens to be pamperedchef.biz, B-I-Z, forward slash, my pampered chef lady. So go check it out, get the recipe called baked waffle sticks and you can make these too. All right, so the first ingredient happens to be flour. Well, we're going to use three quarters of a cup of flour, and I really like our dry measuring cups because when I put this down into the, my flour container, I can take the stick that comes with it and just brush off any of the extra, giving me a perfect measurement. And you get about six different measuring cup sizes with this uh, with this particular set. And the stick actually, the, the leveling stick actually does just snap right on the top along with the rest of them too. Great for easy storage, then you know where they're at. Three tablespoons of sugar. Our adjustable measuring spoons are the very first thing that I ever bought from Pampered Chef. <clears throat> they come in a set of two. Tablespoon and teaspoon. And you move them and you can get any measurement that you wish. See it up close? There you go. You got your one teaspoon, one and a half teaspoon, two teaspoons. Um, and your uh, tablespoon size. This one will actually go from an eighth of a teaspoon all the way to one full teaspoon. The top pops off, easy for clean, and it does have a little rubber piece here so that when you want to measure liquids, they're not going to go up underneath. All right, what's our next ingredient? One tablespoon of baking powder. It's nice to also not have to Go searching and digging for your measuring spoons. You got them all right here. Oh, it's a tablespoon. Ha! I missed that. Did you guys know that three teaspoons make one tablespoon? So we'll just add three teaspoons. A quarter teaspoon of salt. And these are all the dry ingredients. So we're gonna take our stainless steel whisk and mix them up. I'm using our stainless steel mixing bowl that comes in a set of three. These actually do have storage lids and I love the little, the little pad here so that I can put my thumb um, in the hole and when I wanna mix or whisk or pour, um, it, it's comforting but it's very um, controllable for me to hold on to my bowl too. We're gonna to set this aside and we're gonna do our wet ingredients. So this is called a batter bowl. We've got two sizes, the eight cup and the four cup, and this is a classic. These have been in our catalog for years and years, and I'm sure many of you do have them. So if you have them and love them, just hit the, uh, the uh, love button there, and um, we'll see how many of you actually do own them. We're going to add a half a cup of milk. Our easy read measuring cups allow me to look right down, oop, let me see if I can do this, right down on the inside for the measurement. So it makes it super simple. All I have to do is just pour. I don't have to bend and stoop. Um, three tablespoons of oil. This little guy is, some of you may know it as a bigger two cup size, but Pamper Chef came out with a quarter cup size. It's called the Measure All Cup. Um, this way you measure liquids, anything that pours like water. And then when you wanna measure solids or something that's sticky and tacky, you turn it upside down. We're gonna push this down to the three tablespoon mark. We're gonna fill it to the top with oil. And then when we go to pour that out, oil is always left inside your container. So as I push this, I get more and more oil out and I get a clean measuring cup. Mm, two eggs. Here's another fun tip for you. Did you know that when you pop two eggs together, only one of them ever break? Oh, and guess what? I got a shell in there again. So do you remember how to go after the shell? With the shell. You go right down in there and you get the shell out with the shell. 
and we need a teaspoon of vanilla. Here's where my liquid measuring comes in with my adjustable measuring spoons. And we'll whisk this. going to add the wet ingredient to the dry ingredients and we're going to stir so everything is nice and combined well, I looked down at my directions and it said whisk so let's grab another whisk It's always nice to have two. You never know when you're going to need another one. Whisk that up and then get those dry ingredients broken down better into the wet. You see the bottom? That's actually a non-slip gripper. Watch this. I can whisk my bowl and I don't even have to hold on to it. prepare my pan ahead of time, I took my silicone basting brush and I brushed oil into each one of the wells. Now all I have to do is pour my ingredients right into each one of the wells. We just distribute that evenly. With the pour spout on the stainless steel mixing bowl, it makes it real easy to, to pour and it goes where I want it to go. Okay, I skimped on the first one. We'll add a little more to it. Well, if you don't have any of our scrapers either, that's a good addition to your kitchen. They're silicone. They actually do not melt. They don't, um, uh, the head does not come off the handle. You can stick them into a skillet and scramble your eggs and you don't have to worry about it turning all sticky and tacky on the bottom. Oh, and they never stain because they are made of silicone. Now I've got my oven set for 400 degrees. So this is gonna pop right into the oven for 11 to 13 minutes. set it for 11 minutes first and then if I need more I can add more to it but I did want to share with you just a couple of other uh, products that I do have here that I'm going to be using with our waffles um, first of all when you have um, I did use uh, white sugar in my waffle recipe but your brown sugar sometimes has the tendency to get all hard um, to keep that from happening what you do is you take pampered chefs brown sugar keeper which is brand new to our catalog you get two in your box when you order these. You put them into some water and you let them soak for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then you take a towel and you dampen it off and you stick that right into your container with your brown sugar. When you do that, the moisture slowly releases into your brown sugar and it keeps it from getting um, all hard so you won't have hard brown sugar anymore. The other product that I wanted to share with you is our shakers. Now, it's so nice to be able to shake just a little bit of powdered sugar on something or just a little bit of flour without having to put a whole bunch or too many globs in too many places. 
Pampered Chef came out with our powdered sugar shaker. Um, we did have this in our catalog before in plastic, but now it's real nice and goes very, very sleek with um, all the kitchens with the stainless steel appliances. Um, the top is a very fine mesh screen, and so when you shake it out, I'll do it right here on the counter, when you shake it out, you get a nice little shake, and you don't have a whole bunch of it that comes out. It does have a protector cover so that your kitchen grease and dust doesn't get all over. And um, what I did want to share with you is that anybody that orders two or more of these, um, I have a vinyl cutting machine and I will vinyl cut for you um, whichever two you would like on your shakers um, so that you can proudly display them and you can tell the difference between flour and powdered sugar because they look the same but they definitely don't taste the same. This one I have cinnamon and sugar in, which is a whole lot less expensive than buying those bears in the grocery store. Um, so I can just cinnamon and sugar up anything I want, my oatmeal, my toast, um, and even my pancakes or my waffles. So in a few minutes, I'll be coming back and I will share with you this awesome waffle stick maker and what the uh, final production is. We are back with waffle sticks. And it actually did only take 11 minutes in my oven. Look at how beautiful they look. Yeah. I can't wait to try one. And here's how I'm going to fix mine. You know, a waffle stick with a little um, pancake syrup on it. That's great for the kids. But for an adult, watch what I do. First of all, we're going to take our homemade whip topping maker. You fill it just to the fill line with heavy whipping cream and then you usually add sugar, powdered sugar, to make homemade whip topping. Well, you can actually use um, granulated sugar if you wish, but you can use many other flavorings too. So what I'm choosing to do today is use about two tablespoons of caramel ice cream topping. So just dump about what looks like about two tablespoons in there. Put the lid on it pump it for 30 seconds. As you're pumping it, the heavy whipping cream gets stiffer and stiffer, and there is nothing better than homemade whipped topping. Ooh, I feel it getting stiffer. Ooh. You can add chocolate, you can add berries, you can add um, a, a delicious jam to this. Oh my goodness, look at that. Homemade whipped topping, 30 seconds. It takes so much longer to do it any other way. I have to grab a scraper and get this extra off. Because I want none to go to waste. Boy, this really blows my Weight Watchers issue, doesn't it? Okay, now if I wasn't quite ready to use it, the bottom that held it to the countertop for me is a lid. So I just put it right on the top, I got a lid, and I can stick it right in the fridge. <clears throat> okay, what else are we gonna put on this? Well, of course, fruit is always delicious on waffles or pancakes, so let's do a banana. Ooh, I got a couple bad spots in that one. Okay, I could sit here and I could slice this banana or I could use this fun thing called a quick slice. <clears throat> the quick slice has 11 serrated blades and a platform. If you have an egg slicer, you know how nice that works for eggs, but with our quick slice, you can put four eggs on there and slice four all at the same time. Boom. 22 slices of banana done just like that. So let's get our waffle ready. We're gonna pull one of our waffles out. We're gonna shake a little powdered sugar on it. Let's drizzle some butter, pecan, flavored syrup. How about a few bananas? Homemade whipped topping. 
Whoa. Right there in the center. And I'm going to shake a couple chocolate chips over the top, too. Make it look even more awesome and delicious. Now, what's that look like to ya? How many homemade waffle stick makers would you like? You can fit two of them in the oven at the same time. And you, once these cool, you could actually wrap them and freeze them. Then you pull them out, pop them in the microwave, and they are ready. Don't forget, go to my website, pamperedchef.biz slash mypamperedchefflady. You'll find the recipe and you will find the um, waffle pan that you can make your waffles with. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed it.